Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Nanny Joanne. So I'm starting a new series and it's gonna be Nanny Stories Saturdays and it's gonna be all about stories, good and bad, that have happened to me as a nanny. On today's show, I am gonna be talking about an incident that happened to me where I thought, oh my goodness, this kid is gonna pass out on me. It was my first experience dealing with a full-blown tantrum and I was not ready and I was not expecting it to escalate to the manner that it did. This kid was hyperventilating and my first thought was, oh my God, I need to do something to make it better because I cannot have this kid flatline on me just because I said the N-word. No. I'm sure many of you guys out there, both moms, nannies, babysitters, caregivers can relate to these kind of stories. So please, if you can, give me a thumbs up and make sure to leave me your own personal story down in the comments section because I would love to read them because I know that in retrospect, it's kind of comical. All right, so here's my story on what happened to me where I thought my kid was going to flatline because he was having a tantrum. So I'm about two, three months in with this family. Everything is going smoothly. The kids are getting to know me. I'm getting to know them. And one day I decide, hey, let's go out for a walk. So it's me, a girl, and a boy. And I also decided to take their dog, Mia. It was a beautiful day. And since I'm the adult, I decided to choose the route that we were going to take. Right off the bat, the kid flipped out. He was fighting me. No, I don't want to go that way. Let's go this way. And I was like, no, we're going this way. Did not want anything to do with the route that I chose. Immediately, he starts screaming and wailing and crying. Crocodile tears, but nonetheless, crying and just reacting foolish. In my head, I was like, what is going on with this little guy? What's the big deal? We're going this way. Back then, I was younger than I am now. This happened about six years ago. And I was like, no, you're not gonna get one on me. I'm the boss, I'm the one in charge. You're gonna go the way I tell you to go. Let's go. And I was super adamant about it because first of all, you're not gonna get what you want behaving that way. That's number one. So I'm gonna let you know off the rip that is unacceptable behavior and that's not gonna get you what you want. It probably would have been different had he in a calm voice told me, hey Joanne, I'd rather go this way. I don't wanna go this way for whatever reason because there really is no logical reason, but it would have been a different outcome. But being that he was four, obviously he was not going to communicate in that manner. And being that I was younger and inexperienced and don't have the knowledge that I have now, I was not putting up with that. I was like, no, absolutely not. I don't care. We're going this way. Me going back now, I would have taken a second and let him speak and tell me what's going on. Why are you so upset? But that didn't happen. Learned my lesson. I'm sure he learned his lesson because it never happened again. So we start walking, he's crying behind me, you know, a safe distance, I can still reach him if need be. He's, no, I don't wanna go, no, and I'm like, so-and-so, let's go, come on, let's go. You know, your sister's waiting, Mia, the dog is waiting, come on, let's go. So he sees that I, you know, move a couple paces ahead, and he's like, no! Mind you, I'm not, clearly I'm not leaving him, uh, but he decides to, you know, to pull that stunt, and I'm like, Okay, uh, let's go. We're going. The whole time around the block, it, mind you, it was a circle we were doing. We weren't walking a mile. It was a block, a circle. The whole time, honestly, the whole time, he's like, I want to go back home. I want to go back home. Take me back home. And I was like, we are going to go back home once we complete this circle. No, I want to go home now. No, stop. I was super embarrassed, but I was not gonna give in because my ego did not let me. Unfortunately, it was one of, those, one of those situations where I let my ego get the best of me. Again, back then I was younger than I am now and 
I didn't know how to communicate to children. So I kept on, kept, so we, this lasted, no lie, maybe 15 minutes. At one point, a neighbor came out and said, oh my God, the dog is scaring him. I was like, no, he's just throwing a tantrum, thanks. Like, mind your business. That's clearly not what's happening, it's his own dog. Anyways, so we get back to the house, and then he tells me, I don't wanna go inside, I don't wanna go inside. So I'm like, okay, so now we're in the property of the home that he lives. So I'm like, all right, you're in the backyard, there's a window, I can see you, there's a door, I can access you. So stay here till you have calmed down, and if you don't wanna come inside, fine, whatever. He was making so much noise that I honestly was embarrassed and felt bad, so I picked him up and put him inside. I was like, you wanna scream, scream inside, because we're not gonna you know, annoy the neighbors. Inside, he starts hyperventilating, <laughs> one of those. And I was like, uh, are you okay? Because I can deal with the, with the crying and the screaming, but once you start hyperventilating, I get concerned. So I'm like, oh my God, uh, here's some water, here's some, he's like, and he goes like that to the cup. Water spills, and I'm like, I was like, don't do that. That's not how you respond to when somebody gives you water. So that obviously infuriated me even more. So I told him, like, don't do that. I'm giving you water because you're, it's gonna make your throat better. Don't slap it away from me because now we have a mess on the floor and guess who needs to clean it up? So I try again. I'm like, here, drink this. It'll make your throat feel better because right now your throat is really dry because you've been screaming for a long time. So he takes a couple sips. Again, I leave him alone. A couple minutes later, I come back to check up on him, no longer hyperventilating, thank goodness, and I ask him, so-and-so, what happened? Why are you reacting like that? He said, because I didn't want to go that way. I was like, I know that, but why didn't you tell me in a more calm, collected manner? Maybe I was expecting too much of him at that age, but I feel like it legit went from like zero to 60. We go off for a walk, and as soon as I make a left, no! It's not the end of the world, and like I said, if he would have approached me in a more civilized manner, then we could have negotiated or something. But he didn't do that. I didn't take the time to communicate with him, and so it was a disaster for all of us. At the end of it all, I did end up talking to him and we, we ended up understanding one another. He understood that I was the boss, I was the one in charge, and I understood that he wanted to go this way. So I told him, all right, so if we don't want this to ever happen again, all you need to do is talk to me in a calm manner and, you know, we'll, we'll negotiate. We'll come to the table and you'll air out your idea and I'll air out my ideas and we'll meet in the middle. That was my first traumatic experience dealing with tantrums nobody told me what to expect from a tantrum or how what it would or how it would play out i had no idea it could get to that level call me naive whatever it was my second gig prior to that the kids that i was handling were a lot younger so they didn't throw those kinds of tantrums but whoo what a tantrum that was totally not prepared as I mentioned, I'm sure that a lot of you guys can relate to my experience. Please let me know down below. And if you like my Nanny Stories Saturdays, also give me a thumbs up and let me know and I'll give you guys more. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you all next time on more Nanny tips and tricks from yours truly, Nanny Joanne.